And now, live from C Nation Studios at Irwin Academy, it's the C Nation Podcast Show. What's going on, guys? Welcome to Monday, March 23rd from Studio B. My name is Mr. C from Irwin Academy. The scale we're going to be looking at today is once again the C major scale. But we're going to be looking at clarinet, saxophone, and trumpet. All right. Some of you might already know this scale. Good. Practice it. I'm going to be giving you some advanced tips on what to do if you already know how to do this. Jelly bean. I already know how to do this. Why do you have to do it again? Ha 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 ha. All right, anyways. Um, C major scale. It's going to be posted right here. It's the same notes for every instrument. Okay? C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Now, trumpets and clarinets. There are no flats in this scale. Okay? You have a B natural, a regular B. And saxophones, you do not have an F sharp or G flat for you san fancy saxophones. Okay? There's no F sharp in this scale. The scale is just like it says below C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Then back down. Okay? Now, if you are still having trouble on the trumpet, so am I, because I don't play trumpet anymore. <clears throat> A couple things to remember. Before you go into playing or practicing one of the songs, maybe you're one of my fourth grade trumpet players, and you have your book, and you want to go through some of the songs in the book. Okay. Maybe you're a sixth grade trumpet, and you want to work on some of the jazz tunes. Maybe you're a fifth grade trumpet, and you want to work on Cardiff Castle or Centurion. Well, warm up your instrument first. Okay. And... Trying to kill two birds with one stone, instead of just warming up and, you know, playing a couple notes or playing through the song and until your instrument gets warm, then really taking it seriously. I guess I left my phone on. Okay. Um, work on embouchure. All right. What I mean by that is play your notes. Then go up. Trumpets, you know what I'm talking about. Tighten up the embouchure. Play a C. Tighten up the embouchure to play a G. Then tighten it a little bit more to play a high C. And go back down. Just like this. Okay? And make sure you use your tongue when you're stopping the air. Don't just go... You're not going to have good control. And your tone, the way your instrument sounds when you're playing, is going to be very breathy. Like, <sighs> I mean, you don't walk up to your friends and be like, Hey, how are you today? <laughs> Get all your germs and your bad breath on them. No. Okay. Use your tongue to stop the air. And best example is if you've ever had sunflower seeds. You put the sunflower seeds in your mouth. Break the shell with your teeth. You eat the good stuff inside and you spit the seeds out. That's how you want to stop the air on your trumpet. Well, use your tongue. Okay? Practice with the mouthies. Okay. Another thing, I've always talked about, hey, you guys are playing video games. You should just... While you're waiting for your game to load, get your mouthpiece and just work on the mouthpiece. Trumpets and trombones. Yeah, well, this is a good example, okay? Here we are. All right, I'm at my house. You're probably at your house. If you're a trumpet player, get your mouthpiece. If you can make different sounds like that, that's really good. That's all with embouchure, your embouchure control, okay? So when you tighten your embouchure... 
Okay, I'm almost sure it has to do with the muscles on your face, mostly around your mouth, okay? When they're more tight, your pitch is going to be higher. The hole that you're making in your mouth on the inside of the mouthpiece <coughs> is becoming smaller and the air is coming out faster. Kind of like a flute. All right? So just work on playing different notes with your mouthpiece. Not like this. <coughs> That's the same pitch. Okay? I mean like this. <coughs> yes, it sounds hilarious. It sounds funny. That's your goal, okay? Um, you're just buzzing your lips. That's how this instrument works. <laughs> All right. So, work on an embouchure. C, G, C. Back down to G. Back down to low C. <laughs> All right. You have your trumpet out. Let's play it together. All right? So start with your low C. This is what your low C sounds like. Okay? If it sounds like me, that's your low C. Okay? If not, try it again. Let's do it again together. Ready? Low C. All right. I've got to fix something on my computer real quick. This time I know what I'm doing, not like the last video. <laughs> All right, so let's do C again. One, two, ready, go. Awesome. Now let's do a G. Okay, we're still not using the valves. That's why I'm not putting my hand where it should be on the trumpet. I'm just keeping my hand off of it because we don't need to push any of the valves down. Okay, a G. It's the same, no valve. A little bit tighter embouchure. Sounds like this. Alright. Let's play G together. Ready, trumpets? One, two, three. Good. And if your trumpet starts bubbling, you know it's your spit. Ugh. Empty the spit out. <clears throat> Let's do C, G, back to low C. Ready? One, two, ready, go. Now G. Now back down to C. Good. And let's take another step further. Low C, G, high C, and back down. Okay? Yes, the higher the notes, the tighter the embouchure. Okay? And there's no way you're going to get it right away unless you've been working at this. All right? So work at it. You can do it. All right? The more you practice this, the easier embouchure will get. But you just have to make sure to practice, okay? I have not practiced trumpet in a very long time. So I don't sound as good as I used to. And honestly, that's because I'm more focused on my saxophone. So I want to make sure that... All my attention when I'm practicing is going to my saxophone compared to the trumpet. Okay? All right. Let's get back to our trumpets. All right? That way you guys can be better than me as soon as possible. C, G, high C. Back down to G, low C. Ready? One, two, three. G. High C. Back down to low G. Low C. When you can do that, solid, take it faster. Like this. And even faster. If you can do that, which I, all of you can, you just got to practice it. Every single one of my trumpet players and my baritone players, you can do this. If you're a baritone player, you need to be watching this too, okay? Because three of you are a treble clef, and one is bass clef, and this still works for you, okay? All right, so take it faster. When that is good, when you are happy with that, when it's pretty close to being perfect, 
It's time to add the next level, okay? Your open E, which is also no valves, but it's higher than a C. Huh. Okay, and you can keep going. You can keep stacking that higher and higher and higher and higher. Okay? For now, let's just focus on C, G, C. Here's what I want you to do. Okay? Something to do when you're warming up to practice on embouchure. Okay? Start with your C. Now let's go backwards. Let's play a low B. Okay? To play a low B, it's exactly like your regular B. Not a B flat. No, we're going B. We're going to go backwards chromatically. Okay? B, B flat, A, A flat, and this is your low G. Okay? So watch this. Start with our C. <laughs> That's terrible. Now let's do our B. But we're going to keep this valve pushed down, and we're going to do the same embouchure exercise. Okay? Watch. Then the next first valve. Then the low A. A flat is two and three. And your low G. You can do that going up too. Uh, it, it works better backwards. Let's not go up yet, okay? Work on that. If you can do what I just did, and I'll show you exactly what I did again, you're doing really well for yourself. So the first is C, G, C, G, C. Then add the second valve. Da, 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 da. Then change to the first valve. Ba, 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 ba. Then one and two. Ba, 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 ba. And then one, two, three. Ba, 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 ba. You want to go backwards? Go for it. Ba, 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 ba. Actually, we forgot one. Sorry. B, B flat, A, G flat, G. Okay. The G flat, A sharp is two and three. Okay. So it goes B, which is the second vowel. B flat, first vowel. A, which is one and two, A flat, two and three, and then G, your low G is all three of them, okay? All right, now, C major scale. Practice it, why? It's gonna help your playing, it's going to help your tone. It's going to help you, your fingers get faster at playing these notes. It's going to help you with soloing. There's so much benefits to playing these scales. Okay? There's so much benefit to it. All right? For trumpet, here's how we play the C major scale. Okay? You have a C, low embouchure, open, no, no, no valves. Okay? You have your D. We all know how to play this note. Okay? To play D, it's first valve and third valve. One and three. Okay. After that is an E. One and two. After that is an F. The first vowel. Next is your G. Okay. Tighten up a little bit. Okay. Then an A. One and two. Is A is just like an E. Okay. A B, which is just second valve. And then your high C, which is open. Okay? Sounds like this. C. D. E. 1 and 2. F. 1. G. Open. A. 1 and 2. D. Middle finger. Second valve. High C. Open. Then you go backwards. If you can't do that speed, it's fine. Take it slow, okay? Take it slow. Another thing, when you play, don't go like this. Uh, 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 uh. No, it's faster to do this. Ba, 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 ba. Okay? You can change one finger or swap them 
or whatever you need to, okay? Whatever you need to do. You don't have to push it and then let go. You can hold them down, okay? Um, C major scale one more time. Good. Okay. I'm going to play it slow, then I'm going to play it fast. All right? Here's the slow version first. the fast one. Uh, nope. Alright. Play faster than me. Alright. But shoot for accuracy. You want to get your notes right. You want to make sure it sounds good too. You trumpet players, you baritone horn players, you know what these are supposed to sound like. Alright. Make sure it sounds good. Be picky. You are the musician. Don't just settle for, uh, I sounded okay. No, this is you. This is your sound. This is your voice on this instrument that you're playing. Be picky with it. Okay? Make sure you're happy. Make sure it sounds good to you. If you think it sounds good, everyone else is going to agree that it sounds good. All right? All right. So, that's it for the trumpet. Let's go on to clarinet. 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 <laughs> Alright, so I still struggle just like a lot of my clarinet players out there after this high A, after this A right here going into the higher notes don't forget you have to push both thumb keys for the high notes the circle thumb key and the teardrop thumb key, okay the problem that I had when I was doing these is is not the same as the struggles that you're gonna have because I played saxophone already and I'm used to a bigger mouthpiece it was easier for me to do the higher notes a lot of you guys my fourth grade clarinets my fifth grade clarinets my sixth grade clarinets a couple of you have tapped into these higher notes and that's awesome and now you understand how to use them, okay? This goes for my alto clarinets and my bass clarinets too. I haven't forgotten about you guys, okay? Um, just don't fight the embouchure, all right? We're used to... If you sound like that, your embouchure is, is like really muscling it out. You need to relax. Relax your jaw, relax your mouth, and just let them come out high. If you sound like that second sound, you're fighting it with your mouth. Okay, relax when you play. Make sure you're pushing both thumb keys and start from the top. And you play over here because it's too loud. This is how you play a high C. Okay, this one. All right. It's the bottom pinky key that's in line with all of the circles. It's not this one. Not these two off to the side. It's all in a straight line. You see that? This is how you play your low your low note. And is that your low C? Uh, yeah, that is your low C. To do a low B, you want to hit the C key. And you want to hit... Uh, where is it at? Where are you? That one. Okay. How do I know this is it? And it's it's this one. Right there. Because every key will be closed. None of these keys down here will be open. You see that dude right there that's opening? The lowest note? The lowest key? If this is closed, if every key on the bottom clarinets is closed, that's how you do your C. Okay? You need both thumbs, the bottom pinky that's right in line with your fingers, and then this one right here. It's You have the C sharp key. You have this dude over here. And then the next one right down. Not the one off to the side. The lowest top pinky key. Not the one off to the side. 
Not this one off to the side. Not this one off to the side. Bam, right there. Okay. Not the one next to your ring finger. Bam, right there. Okay. All right. So, clarinet, C major scale. <sighs> Let's come back to it. High notes. Don't fight it. And it's going to take practice. You have to be persistent. You can't just give up because, oh, I can't do it. It's too hard. Oh, well, guess what? When you were all fourth graders or if you're fourth grade now, you two fourth grade clarinet players, you girls are kicking butt, both of you. I know one of you doesn't believe me. Mm-hmm. You girls are doing awesome. Keep up the good work, okay? For all my other clarinet players, don't fight it. Practice it, all right? When you first got a clarinet, you couldn't do the things that you could do now, fifth and sixth grade clarinets. You couldn't. A lot of you struggled. Some of you still don't believe that I think you're great clarinet players. All right? You are. I'm not going to sit there and waste your time, waste my, my time, pretending that you're not good. Every single one of you clarinet players is great at this. You might not believe it, but I'm the one that hears you every day. Okay? And you girls and boys do awesome. Keep up the good work. Don't give up on this instrument. All right? Once you get these high notes, watch. You're going to be so proud. I did it. Yeah, I knew it. I know it. Now you just got to prove it to yourself, guys. Okay? High notes. Don't fight them. Both thumb keys. Okay? Um, To do our C major scale, we're going to start on our low C, a regular C. Okay? With the circle thumb key. This is the C that you all know. All right? So you're going to play C. And yes, I have my thumb key pushed right now. C, D, E, F. I'm just pushing the thumb. G, nothing. A. Okay, let's just do that far for now, okay? So, with the thumb, C, D, E, F. My thumb is still being pushed. G, nothing, A. Okay, we're going to do it slow. Here we go. One, two, ready, go. All right, let's do it again. Same speed. One, two, start on a C. One, two, ready, go. Next part is the hard part. Now you're transitioning into your higher notes. After the A, you have to close everything. Both thumbs, both thumbs now. My thumb is already on the circle key and look at it. bam A lot of us do that with our video games, right? We just roll our thumb over and hit an extra button. It's the same idea. Okay? Both thumb keys. One, two, three on top. Remember, I've said this in a previous video. When I mean one, two, three on top, I mean first finger, second finger, third finger up here. When I say one, two, three on bottom, First finger, second finger, third finger, down here, okay? And clarinets, you all know where your fingers are supposed to go. Just make sure that your left hand is on top. Well, how do I know, Mr. C? You see these things right here, these side keys? If you have a hand right here, and your pinky is close to these side keys, then you have the wrong hand on top. All right? If you have a right hand on the bottom, and you're touching these, that's not right. Your left hand is on the bottom. It shouldn't be on the bottom. Okay? Left hand on top. Just like with flutes and saxophones, left hand is always on top. Okay? Oh, I got some text messages from teachers. Miss Ocheng says hi, everybody. And Mrs. Forster says hi. Hi, Miss Forster. Hi, Maddie. Hi, Mr. Tim. Miss Forster, I will answer your text as soon as I'm finished with this video. All right, so high notes. Ooh, and we're getting close to 30 minutes, and I still got to do saxophone. Okay, both thumbs. One, two, three on top. One, two, three on bottom. All right, your C. And we need to go to the B. The B has this pinky key, remember, okay? It's the, your, your pinky should be really close to these pinky keys all the time, okay? 
And naturally, it'll just be right where you need it every time. If you're not in that good habit, well, start making it a good habit, okay? If it's off to the side, that's not the right key. If it's this one that's kind of in the back, mm -mm. if it's this one right next to your finger, no, it should be right there. Your fingers, when you put your fingers your, on the keys, over the keyholes, your pinky should be like pretty much in the right spot. All right? So remember, it's this one. And it's this one that's straight in line with the bottom, the lowest key, straight in line, okay? Close both of those pinky keys, one, two, three on top, one, two, three on bottom, both thumb keys, and it should sound like this. If you sound like this, all right, that's the air in your mouth that's making it higher than usual. Keep at it. If you sound like this, You're fighting it too hard. Relax. Let it come out high. It should sound like this again. All right. And to play the next note, pick up your top pinky. And there's your C. All right. Work at it. You can do it. The next step is playing that whole scale. All right. Going from the A to the B and the C, it's kind of tricky. But if you keep working at it, you will get it no problem. Okay? So, C major scale, starting from your low C, circle pinky. Ready? One, two, slow. Ready? Go. <laughs> oh, that's a wrong A. I'm sorry. One more time. One, two, ready? Go. Okay, let's do it again, but slower, because my computer monitor just shut off. I disappeared, and uh, <laughs> I just I went at speed too fast. Okay, slower. One, two, ready, go. backwards but I got lost sorry okay let's do it again same speed going all the way up to the high C all the way back down okay one two regular C circle thumb one two ready go again slow and then I'm gonna change the speed a little bit because you don't want to play at the same speed when you're getting it right play it faster okay here we go C major scale slow one two ready go <laughs> You can do it. I mean, you saw me struggle a tiny bit with it. Okay? You can do it. Here we go. Here it is faster. <laughs> Let's see if I can do it. One, two, ready, go. I made a mistake, so uh, no big deal. Alright, let's do it again. Same speed. I'm going to try to get it right. One, two, Ready? Go. That was better. I don't think I could play it faster, but I'm going to sure try. I might like make a lot of mistakes, but if you laugh at me, good. You can laugh because I won't know. Ha <laughs> ha! All right, here we go. One, two, ready, go. I would 
had it, but I keep mixing up my pinkies. Maybe you're having the same problem as me. If you are, well, that just goes to show you that, hey, you're doing it right. Because if I'm still making a mistake and I'm not editing out these videos because I don't, it's fine. We're learning together, right? No big deal. If you did, as if you played close to what I did, that's progress regardless. Okay? Keep at it. Here we go. I'm going to try it again. I want to try to get this right. One, two, all right. See, that was a lot better. It wasn't as fluid as I would want it to be. It wasn't as smooth as I would want it to be. But that was a lot better. Okay? All right. Let's move on because uh, I'm taking a lot of time. Ooh. My 1937 King Zephyr. <laughs> Playing on my classical mouthpiece, uh, Eugene Rousseau mouthpiece, has a nice dark warm tone to it, and I have my fax ligature. These things are pretty cool. Um, yeah, and I've had my neck strap on this whole time, which I'm sure all of my sax players recognize that I had my neck strap on this whole time, because when you put your instruments away, you leave your neck straps on too. Ha ha! C major scale. All right. Um, I'm going to show you the easier way, and I'm going to show you the more difficult way. It's easier to do it on a saxophone, okay? So, to do this, you want to play a C, which is middle finger, and uh, I talked about this on the flute the other day, okay? If you're new to the saxophone, welcome. All my kids already know where their fingers are supposed to be, and you guys have all done really good. I'm proud of you, okay? If this is your first time ever playing a saxophone, and you're not one of my kids... Look at, maybe you want to pause the video right here and see where my fingers are, okay? Left hand is always on the top. Right hand cannot go on the top because then your left hand can't go anywhere on the bottom. It's weird. Left hand has to go on the top, okay? You want to curl your fingers like if you're going to scratch somebody's eyeballs out because if you're playing your fingers flat and you're hitting these open keys right here, then that's going to be a problem. You're going to sound like this while you're playing. <laughs> You can have the same problem with these side keys on the bottom, too. Okay, if you're hitting one of these and you're trying to play, okay, it's not going to sound any different, all right? So, you always skip this top key. Put your first finger right there. Always skip the tiny one, middle finger, ring finger. Your pinky rests right around here, okay? On the bottom of the saxophone, one, two, three. The pinky rests right around here, okay? And I have an extra key right here. Just ignore that, okay? This is a vintage sax, and they made this so you can do cool things. Your sax most likely does not have this G-sharp key, okay? One, two, three. All right. Skip the top key, first finger. Skip the tiny key, second finger, third finger, okay? To play C, you're just going to use a middle finger. That's your C. All right, the next note is a D. You're going to push the thumb key, the octave key, the register key. One, two, three on top. One, two, three on bottom. That's a D. It sounds like this. Like I said in the beginning of the video, saxes. There are no F sharps. This is an F sharp. Mm -mm. You're going to play first finger instead. This is your F. D, E, F. Okay? So the next note is an E. One, two, three on top. Thumb. One and two on the bottom. F. Just pick up your middle finger. One, two, three on top with the thumb. First finger on the bottom. Then a G. Pick up your first finger on the bottom. One, two, three on top. A. Pick, it's just one and two on the top. B. One and thumb. And high C. It's just like the C that we played, but we're using the thumb. You go backwards. B, first finger and thumb. A, one and two with the thumb. G, one, two, three with the thumb. F, one, two, three on the top, one on the bottom with the thumb. E, one, two, three on top with the thumb, one and two on the bottom. D, one, two, three on top, one, two, three on bottom, and thumb. And finally a C. 
Middle finger on the top. Second finger on the top. No thumb. All together should sound like this. I'll play it slow. Alright. Let's play it together. I'm going to play it slower. Ready? One, two. Ready? Go. Okay. Your goal is to play it faster. If you're a trumpet player, clarinet player, saxophone player, flute player, you want to play these. You want to play them as perfectly as possible. And you want to increase the speed. Okay. So saxes, let's increase the speed. A little bit, not too much. One, two, ready, go. Alright, good. For those of you that... <clears throat> that this is too easy for you, play the scale faster. And then even faster. And even faster. Slur it if you want to. Okay, and I said I was going to show you a different way to play it, a little bit harder. The lower register. A low C. Starting on a low C. All right. One, two, three on top. No thumb. One, two, three on bottom. And the bottom, bottom, pinky key. Why do I say bottom, bottom? Because you have a top, pinkies, and you have bottom, pinkies. Okay, one, two, three on top, one, two, three on bottom. And then your bottom, pinky key, right there. Okay, lower notes are a little more challenging. You need a little bit more air, but you got to control it the right way. You don't want to sound like a truck on the freeway. Okay, I probably, that probably wasn't good for the recording, sorry. All right. But. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. All right. Once again, one, two, three on top, no thumb. One, two, three on the bottom, and the bottom pinky key. All right. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. And then backwards. All right. It sounds like this. Uh, I didn't get the pinky key on the video. Oh well. Okay. Try not to play too loud. You don't want to honk. You want a good tone, okay? And it's, sometimes it's hard to get those higher notes. Okay, sometimes the only way to get started with them is to play them loud. Okay, just don't upset your families. All right. All right. So here is, and that's a C major scale for saxes. Okay. <clears throat> for my students that you know this already and you're like, Mr. C, I want to challenge. Okay. Well, here's your challenge now. Okay. I want you to play this in thirds. Okay? Oh, man, what happened? Okay. Um, I want you to play it in thirds. Okay? Okay? So, with thirds, what you're going to do is you're going to... Let me get my sax back. Start with your beginning note, your C. Everybody's starting on a C, okay? And you're going to go up the scale, just like you would normally do. But after every note, you want to add a third step higher from the note that you're playing, okay? Uh, now you're confused, right? Okay. So you're playing a C, okay? C, D, E. So C, and then E. 
then play D. D, E, F. D, F. That's what I mean by thirds, okay? And I will write it right here. This is your third scale right here, okay? It's a C major scale, but you're playing with thirds. And this is what it's going to sound like. <laughs> For my sax players, a high D is thumb, and the shortest uh, palm key, right here, okay? This one's lower than these two. So your thumb and this one right here, okay? So that's how you play a high D, thumb and high key. Can you do the slow? Yes. <laughs> backwards okay <laughs> anyways I don't want to play too loud with the microphone okay challenge yourself now play thirds okay that's your challenge and uh, coming next I'll be doing a trombone video so my trombones you get ready I haven't forgotten about you guys okay my drums, my buckets, you're coming up after the trombones, okay? And um, we're going to be getting more in-depth with scales and different ways to practice them, okay? For my advanced players, I have not forgotten about you, Jelly Bean. Uh, no. Work on your thirds now, okay? And then uh, K-A, mm -hmm. you too, all right? Um... All of you guys, I miss you guys. Take care. Please practice. Don't stop the music just because you're at home and you're not at school. You can do it. This is the perfect time to practice. This is where you get to show your families how good you really are. The type of great musicians that I know you all are. Okay? Don't stop the music. Don't stop practicing. Keep up the good work because you're only going to get better the more you practice. All right? I'm Mr. C from Irwin Academy here in Studio B, and I'm signing out for now. You guys take care. Peace.